Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today I'm bringing to you both my August and September wrap-up. I'm gonna be real, um, I already filmed my August wrap-up, and I just never got around to editing it and posting it, so we're gonna combine two videos together, so I'm redoing my intro right now to let you know that I'm doing two wrap-ups, and then you're gonna see me in a different outfit on a different day as I talk about August, and then I'm gonna get back into this outfit and talk about September, if that makes sense. So let's just get into this wrap up. Here is my footage from August. As you can see, I'm in my bed again. Um, honestly, I might start filming all my videos in my bed because it's super comfortable and I don't have to get ready. And I just wear what I'm wearing and um, I'm not even wearing pants right now, if we're being completely honest. So. Let's just get into this wrap up. So the first book that I read in August was Say Yes to the Marquess by Tessa Dare. This is the second Tessa Dare book that I've attempted reading. So this is a historical romance book that centers around this girl named Cleo and she's been betrothed to this guy named Pierce since she was a teenager and he just keeps coming up with reasons uh, not to marry her so she's been waiting an extremely long time and she's become a laughing stock so she decided enough is enough and she doesn't want to marry him and she wants to open up a brewery at this castle that she's inherited. This is an installment in the Castles Ever After series, so basically it's like these different books about girls like inherit castles or something. I read the first book in this series, last wrap up, um, what is it called, Romancing the Duke. It was another one where she like inherited a castle. I don't know, it's like a thing in these books. Um, they're not super related, so you can read them all out of order, but I just happened to be reading them in order. I think this is the second one. So yeah, basically Cleo doesn't want to marry this guy, and so she approaches his brother Rafe, who is a prize fighter and is like yo can you like get me out of this engagement like if you sign a paper then I'm like good to go and he doesn't want to do it because he like wants her to marry his brother I don't know like he just decides that he will plan her wedding for her because Pierce is coming home and he's gonna force him to get married whatever whatever so basically hijinks ensue and obviously like Cleo and Ray fall in love because it's a romance book I definitely liked this book more than I liked Romancing the Duke Rafe was a lot more tolerable than the guy from Romancing the Duke I don't even remember his name he was just a fucking idiot um yeah it was a good book it was fun I liked Cleo a lot uh she was a really good female character I thought her idea to open a brewery was interesting and I liked that she had ambitions and then you know I liked how Rafe complimented her and it was just it was a good time so I recommend it if you like historical romance and you don't want like characters who are really weak so yeah you should read that so the next three books that I read were the first three books in the October Day series by Shauna McGuire let me start by saying that if you really enjoy the Every Heart of Doorway series, I don't necessarily recommend you pick these up because Shauna McGuire's writing is just so radically different. Like I understand that these books came much earlier than the Every Heart of Doorway series, but like it's just mind blowing how different they are to the other series. Like. I love the Every Heart of Dory books. Like, they're so magical. They're so fun. They fill me with warmth. They're just, like, such good books. And the October Day books, like, make me want to die. Which you're probably like, okay, Sarah, like, why'd you read three of them in a month then? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I think I, like, got hooked on the idea of them getting better. And so I just, like, kept reading them. And I'm probably gonna read more. And did I give every single one of them two stars? Yeah, I did. So, basically, the October Day series centers around October Day. And she is a changeling, which means that she is half fae and half human. So in the first book, she is a private investigator. And so she is like hunting down some like missing person. And along the way, she meets up with like a bad fae and he turns her into a koi fish. And she is stuck in a pond for, I think, I think it was like 15 years. I can't remember the exact number, but she's like stuck in this pond for a really long time and when the spell is finally broken she has like lost all of her loved ones because like they thought she just left like she was in a relationship with a human and he didn't know that she was a changeling and so he thinks that she just left and she had a daughter and basically like she's basically just like fucked because it seems like she ran away when really she was turned into a fish and so that's kind of where it starts and then it kind of just keeps going as like October is pulled back into the world of the Fae. Let me just say the world building is so confusing. It's just really sloppy and hard to follow. Like I'm very much a show don't tell me person and October narrates these books and she just like 
overloads you with information. She just like tells you about every single species of fae. Like there's so many fucking different species. Like I just, I cannot keep track of them. I can't understand. I forget. I've, you know, I've read three books by now and I, I, I can only tell you probably like three of the species. Um, honestly, I can't even remember the species that October herself is. Listen, I don't expect to have a whole fantasy world in like one chapter of a book, but like the way this world building is being done throughout these books is just like, number one, repetitive, because she repeats a lot of stuff as the series keeps going. Also, the way October narrates the books is super repetitive. Like, she repeats throughout all of the books multiple times, I'm not a hero, I'm not a hero, as she goes and does something heroic. And it's just like, so annoying. Also, the Fae world always has like lots of rules. Like I feel like every time it's in any book, there's always like rules to how the courts work and stuff. And the rules in this world just like are really heavy and confusing. And like then like October is kind of on the outside because she's a changeling and she's not a pureblood. So like there's rules even about that. And it's just like, also I know I'm just basically complaining, but I'm gonna complain some more because in the second book, October is called in to like investigate these murders that are happening at this like weird um, fairy court that's like in San Francisco, like in the tech valley. Like it's like a tech lab that's like fey. I know that makes no sense, but it also made no sense when I was reading it. And so she like is investigating these murders and she is the worst detective. The way she figures out the murders is everyone is literally murdered. So it's like a process of elimination and she spends most of the book like getting coffee, just like talking and crying and like not figuring anything out. I know I'm being so hard on these books right now. I don't even understand. And I've read three of them. I will say the third one, in my opinion, is the best so far. Like it finally got more interesting and it delved more into the Fey world. And that one, like I feel like the mystery was more interesting. It wasn't even really a mystery. Like we knew who the bad guy was the whole time, but like the battle against him was more interesting. I will say it was very cyclical and like it took a long time to resolve and we just kept returning to the same spot multiple times. Um, But like I said, I'll probably keep reading. I don't know what is going on. Like I keep reading them and the whole time I'm like, October, you're so fucking dumb. And then I'm like, when's the next book? I should probably read the next book. So I don't really know what's going on there. It's almost like I'm gonna keep reading these but I could never in good conscience tell you to read them because they're so bad. The next book that I finished was First Grave on the Right by Dorinda Jones. This is the first book in the Charlie Davidson series. As you can tell I've been kind of on like a urban fantasy kick lately and I've just been like reading a lot of it. I don't know why. It's weird because like on the one hand I feel like I don't love urban fantasy but on the other hand like I do like it. I'm like having a good time so like I don't really understand what's going on either but basically Charlie is also a PI because I feel like that's a very common theme in these different urban fantasy series like the female character is always like a PI or like something like that and also has like a really edgy like kind of like rebellious personality which Charlie definitely has as well as October in the October Day series. And the difference here though is that Charlie is a Grim Reaper and so basically like departed souls have to pass through her and so she uses her PI skills and her gift to solve things and she works really closely with the police department to help solve murders and stuff because her uncle is a detective. It's basically your typical like I'm quirky and sarcastic and I really like coffee um, and I like also solve crime sort of urban fantasy and it was good. I liked it better than October Day. I still gave it like three stars though because um, it wasn't like that good. The writing is like not amazing. And I don't really like the guy who like visits her in her sleep and has sex with her. I feel like his character is kind of weird and I don't really know why she likes him. Um, I like, I'm reading the second book right now and there's like this scene where he like mistakes her for someone else and he like chokes her because he thinks she's like a demon or something. And I'm like, I know that was like a mistake, but like I don't really like support it. Like when Bay is like trying to choke you, but like not in a sexy way, you know? The last book that I finished in August was Elusive by Emily Lloyd Jones. This has been on my TBR for I want to say two or three years. I saw a video from Emma Books where she recommended it as a like underrated book. And I would 100% agree that it's underrated. So it's sort of dystopian. But like before you like don't want to read it because of that. It's not like super dystopian. It's like, it's weird. It's kind of like the world is fine and normal except for there's been like this virus that like wiped out a lot of people. And then there was this sort of like antidote that caused certain people to get superpowers when they took it. Okay, like if I had to compare it to something that was a little more comparable, it would be like white collar meets X-Men because our main character, Sierra, is a part of like this band of thieves that use their powers to like do 
like crimes and stuff, but they're like white collar crimes. They're like stealing paintings and money and like that sort of thing. The story itself had a lot of action. It was just kind of like, go, 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 go. I really liked like how like sort of real it was. Like they didn't shy away from like people getting hurt or like things going wrong. My only complaint about this book was that Sierra was the only female character. Like there was only really like one other mentioned and she was only like on a couple of pages and she was a bad guy. And then every other woman was just like merely mentioned. Like, every other person in her thieving crew was a man. It didn't really seem like it was for a reason. It just sort of seemed like the author forgot to write about other women. And it was just, it was just bizarre. Also. If Magnus and Kit don't end up as a couple, that will be a missed opportunity. You probably are like, I don't know who Magnus or Kit are, but if you read the book, then you will know and you'll know why they should be together. They definitely should. I'm just saying, like, if you're gonna subject me to the patriarchy, there better be some queer love because um, I just like don't wanna read about that many men and then have none of them be together. So the first book that I read in September was Moon Called by Patricia Briggs. This is the first book in the Mercy Thompson series. The reason that I read this is because it's one of my mom's all-time favorite books and as you can tell this copy is very well loved because it's actually hers. She lent it to me I want to say like two years ago and I just never got around to reading it and she's been begging me for a really long time to do that and obviously she probably like wants her copy back. So I finally read it and the results are in and I didn't really like it. Number one, don't really like werewolves and this book deals heavily with them. Number two, I have a hard time taking a book seriously that has a cover like this. It's just really weird that the cover looks like this because I feel like the character Mercy doesn't really dress like this. I feel like Mercy is like a badass woman who um, you know, might show off some skin sometimes, but um, she's a mechanic and I just don't feel like she dresses like this when she's working on cars. The characters in this book fell a little flat for me and I just didn't really believe the like the love story between the characters. Like there was one guy that she supposedly was in love with when she was like 16 and he like comes back into the book and I just feel like everything was like stated as facts and I just didn't feel any chemistry between characters and um, I just felt like they weren't very like distinct. Yeah, I think Mercy was really the only character that I liked. She is a skinwalker, so she can turn into a coyote. And basically in this book, I realized I didn't even talk about the plot. She is a mechanic and she lives, I can't remember, I think it's Arizona. She lives like in the middle of nowhere in like a small town and she works as a mechanic and in this day and age, um, people don't know about werewolves, but they do know about like fae in general like the fae are part of this and so um they have come out into public a long time ago and so people are like aware of like magic type things but like people don't know that werewolves exist and mercy was raised by werewolves even though she turns into a coyote so she's definitely different and so um this book has her having to like travel back to where she was raised to like figure out some werewolf business and um i don't know it's kind of boring so that's all you really need to know about it Everything in the plot just seemed kind of convenient to me. It just, I didn't feel like there was a lot of like things at stake. Like I just didn't enjoy it. And I also just thought the world building was a little weird. Like there's werewolves, but then there's also fae and then there's also vampires. And I just feel like she didn't like explain any of these worlds like well enough. And like I said, I really don't like werewolves. They just kind of remind me of like big dogs, but they're like not even cute. And they have a like too many rules and regulations and it's just like so much toxic masculinity because like it really really adheres to the whole like oh i'm an alpha blah, and just i'm not into that i'm not into that and then there's this one character that's gay and he is a werewolf but like apparently like when you turn into a werewolf all of your senses are heightened and like your sexuality is heightened and so because he's a werewolf and he's attracted to men and then he's like turning into a werewolf with other men like it's like not okay and I just ugh, not into it I'm not into it I will be reading the second book only because my mom wants me to and I'll do whatever I can for mama Tracy like I'll just do it for my mom basically but other than that I don't really like this book and I don't even know if I recommend it but my mom likes it so you might like it because my mom likes it but I don't like it and you're watching my channel. So do what you will with that information. The next book that I read in September was Never World Wake by Marisha Pessel. This was one of my most anticipated releases for the year and so I was 
very excited that I finally got around to reading it. This book centers around five friends who were very close all throughout high school, but on their senior year, their sixth friend, Jim, um, died and it was ruled as a suicide, but all of them have a lot of questions surrounding his death. And now they've all gone off to college and finished their freshman year. And then they come back together um, to see each other and they're all very suspicious of one another. And so this night that they all get together, they end up getting in a car accident and then they make it back to the estate that they're staying at. One of the girls in the group is pretty wealthy. So she has kind of like a mansion that they're staying in um, and it's like storming outside. And then this man shows up on the doorstep and tells them that when they got in their car accident they actually all died and now they are stuck in this place called the Neverworld Wake and they have to choose one of them to survive and like go back to that moment and only one of them can survive the car accident. So yeah that's basically the premise. I know I was kind of repetitive explaining it but um, that's not giving anything away that's pretty straightforward that's like what you'll find in the blurb. Um, yeah it's kind of like a sci-fi thriller mystery situation. What I liked about this book is that Marisha Pessel managed to tell a very complex story that involved a lot of like thinking and like mind fuckery because the Neverworld Wake is kind of hard to understand. Um, so she was able to tell this really complex story but keep it simple. Like I feel like anybody could read this and kind of get everything straight and not be confused even though the concept is kind of big. I really enjoyed the characters in this book. At first glance they were a little bit tropey and they all kind of were like caricatures of like different types of people that you could go to high school with but as you keep reading I feel like each character is revealed to have like a lot of depth so the thing about the Neverworld Wake is that it's sort of like repeating a day. Um, I would say this book kind of reminds me of like Groundhog Day meets Final Destination and it definitely was a wild ride. I will say that there were parts of it that were pretty slow. Um, I definitely don't think this is for someone who wants a book that's like bam 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 with action like I think this like book very slowly unfolds the story and I liked that and I like Marisha Pestle's writing a lot. Yeah I could definitely see why this book isn't for everyone but if you kind of like books that like take you on a journey and kind of like mind fuck you a little bit then I definitely would recommend it and there were definitely a few things that I didn't see coming which is always a big plus for me in a thriller. There was you know it was like hit or miss like there definitely were things that I was like okay I could kind of see that and then other things were like I was like I didn't see that coming at all so and for those of you who are wondering what I thought of it in comparison to Night Film I still like Night Film a lot more but as a YA debut for Marisha Pessel I thought this was pretty good and I definitely look forward to reading more books by her but if you're gonna ask me which book should you prioritize reading I definitely would say Night Film over this one just because I feel like Night Film is just a really unique and special experience um, but this is still really good and it's shorter than Night Film so do what you want with that information. The next book that I read was Eleanor by Jason Gurley. This is a really weird book to describe. It's sort of a genre twist book, if you will. Like it starts out like literary fiction, but then it kind of gets twisted into like sci-fi fantasy. So basically we have this girl named Eleanor and when she is about five, she gets into a car accident with her twin sister and her mother. Her sister ends up dying and this ends up taking its toll on her family and so the book sort of starts out like I said like literary fiction like examining grief and like how this family is coping and they're like not doing so great and now you know flash forward Eleanor is a teenager and her mom is an alcoholic and her parents are divorced and it's just like not a good situation and so then weirdly I don't even know how to describe this there's this entity watching Eleanor and they keep taking her into like different dimensions. I know that sounds really weird but that's basically what's happening in the book. It's really odd and so she like keeps entering these other dimensions and losing time and all the while it's like examining her grief. I don't really know. It was it was a very weird book and I know I'm not doing a very good job explaining it. Um, I definitely would recommend you look up the blurb but even so the blurb doesn't really like allude to that very heavily. All you have to know is just that you think it's a normal contemporary book and then it's like not and there's other dimensions and it's weird. So what I'll say is that this book was really hard to rate because the imagery was really nice and the writing was beautiful. The genre twist in my opinion was a tough pill to swallow. I enjoyed the idea of a book changing plots. I just don't know how successful it was in this book. It just took me on a weird ride. I, I don't really know what to say about this book. What, I'll, what I will tell you is that I rated it 3.75 stars because of the writing 
and I read some other people's reviews and they were like all about this book. So I just think it depends on what kind of person you are. Like if you like really weird books that have like imagery, allegory, and like weird stuff, then this might be the book for you. But if you're kind of like me, where that stuff is okay, but like not your favorite, then I wouldn't say this is for you. Like, don't get me wrong, like I said, I enjoy like a mind fuckery book, kind of like Neverworld Wake, but this one, I don't know how I liked the genres mixing. It just, it was weird. Take what you will with what I said. I'm mixing up my slogan, but you know, whatever. Take what I said with a grain of salt and make your own decision on whether or not you wanna read it. I just defined how booktube works. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> the next book that I finished was Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. I had heard people talking about this book a really long time ago saying that it was a really good YA thriller and I am always in the market for a good YA thriller. I feel like I have read a lot of bad ones in my lifetime so I'm always looking for that thriller that will leave me guessing, keep me interested, and this one actually very pleasantly surprised me. I really enjoyed it. I don't know why I was surprised because I just said I heard a lot of people saying that it was good but um Okay, so I know I'm like switching camera angles like mid talking about something, but my camera stopped recording for a second and then I realized that the position that I was sitting in was really uncomfortable and now I just kind of want to lounge while I talk to you. So hopefully you don't mind this really unattractive angle with like way too much headspace. Like this is definitely not something I recommend with like how you should film, but I'm going to keep going with it. So anyway, I'm going to have my computer here because um, I have been looking at my Goodreads reviews while I tell you what I think about these books. Anyway, let's get back into it. Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. So this book centers around this girl named Casey. Okay, sorry. I'm going to set up a little bit. Like I, the headspace was like annoying me. Sorry. Hopefully that framing is slightly better. It's still a very unattractive angle. But anyway, this book centers around this girl named Casey. And so she's kind of the new girl in town because she's grown up most of her life with her mother. But due to some like child services situations, she gets... Um, sent to go live with her father who she's never really met like her mom and dad kind of split up when she was really young and then she just kind of like never kept in touch with him and he has like a new family so she goes to go live with his new family and um you know she's living a good life it's very different than the life that she had with her mom now she's got a little sister and she's got a brother and um she's got friends and she's having a good time casey's life starts to get a little bit more complicated when her new friends their names are bailey and jade um start acting weird and distant from her and she's not really sure like what she's done wrong and then they go to a party without her um and the next day jade comes to casey and it's like bailey never came home from the party and so she's missing and so the whole town is like looking for bailey and they don't know what happened to her and so it ends up just like a mystery of what happened to her friend and like people start suspecting Casey of stuff because she's like the new girl in town and it's it's just it's a good mystery that's basically the premise a girl goes missing and Casey's the new girl in town that's that's all you really need to know but um this was a really solid YA thriller like it was really good like I said it had me hooked from beginning to end it kept me guessing that's kind of hard for me to do it just like went in a couple different directions like you'd feel like it was going one way and then it would be like no what about this other way and you'd be like whoa I didn't like consider that and so I definitely enjoyed it um I feel like it'd be an interesting book to reread now that you know like what you know about it um yeah I don't know I don't really have much to say t about this other than I gave it four stars and it was like a good time and you know if you're looking for a book that's like not too scary and still good and keeps you guessing then I recommend it I'm gonna adjust again because this is really a horrible angle and it's starting to bother me, so let's do it. Eh. Hopefully it's not blurry now. This is still really unattractive. My hair looks like a mop. But anyway, let's keep going. So the next book that I read was Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Um, this is probably one of the goriest creepiest most fucked up thrillers I've ever read in my life so you know how I just said like oh if you don't really like things that are that scary you can read Little Monsters by Kara Thomas if you don't like things that are scary don't read Pretty Girls because it's not great for someone who doesn't like darn things so this book centers around these two sisters who many many years ago I think it was like more than 20 years ago their older sister went missing and no one ever found her never found her body they have no idea what happened to her and it put a big strain on their family and so these two sisters Claire and Lydia they're actually estranged now now that they're adults like something happened when they were younger and they got in a fight and now they don't talk the thing that ends up bringing these two sisters back together is that in the beginning of the novel Claire's husband gets murdered like they are like kissing in an alley and this guy robs them and like stabs her husband and so 
after he um, is murdered, um, Lydia and Claire end up getting back in touch and they start to uncover some sinister things. All I'm gonna say from there, I don't really wanna give anything else away. It's, it's very, very dark, but it all kind of connects back to um, what, what happened to their sister 20 years ago. But it is probably one of the most graphic and just like dark books that I've like ever read in my life. I know I'm being really repetitive right now, but I just really want to get that content warning out there so that you don't be like, oh, Sarah said this is a good book and then read it and then like get scarred for life. But personally for me, this book was absolutely addicting. I am often disappointed by thrillers, but this was so good. Like I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Like it was good. It was such a good time. Uh, I loved every twist and turn. It was really gritty and raw and there were times that it made me cry like, Oh, just it makes me so sad that like obviously this is a really really extreme example like kind of out there because it's a book but like just the fact that there's this violence as humans that we can inflict on others and just especially against women like it just made me so sad and just uh uh they were just I was in tears at times and then just even the fact that they lost their sister to violence and like ugh makes me so sad and so I would definitely say this is one of the best thrillers that I've ever read. I just really enjoyed it. I know I'm being so repetitive right now. I'm even being repetitive by saying I'm being repetitive because I just said I was repetitive and I just said the word repetitive like 10 times. But anyway, um, I will definitely be reading more Karen Slaughter books. I actually am currently participating in Spookathon this week. Hopefully I edit and put this up during Spookathon so the sentence even makes sense. But yeah, I'm reading another Karen Slaughter book right now for readathon because I liked this book so much and I really look forward to reading more by her. Probably gonna edit this later and like hate myself for how much I didn't make sense. The last book that I read in September was The Scorpio Races by Maggie Steepwater. This is a very weird book to describe. I feel like I say that a lot. I feel like I read a lot of books that have hard plots to describe or maybe I'm just bad at describing plots. Who knows? This is written about a island. Um, Maggie Steepwater like very specifically doesn't say where it is but I kind of pictured it like an island off of the UK like sort of like Wales Irish Scottish sort of situation and on this island it's called Thisbe every November they have this thing called the Scorpio races and so basically this island has these like weird crazy water horses like literally horses that come out of the ocean and they're like really savage and they eat meat and like they can attack you and like kill you and like eat your body. Um, they're like really crazy, but for some reason, the people on the island like to tame them and make them race in this race called the Scorpio races. Um, and people die a lot every year, and but apparently it's just like a big deal and like tourists come to the island and it's like how the island makes most of its money. Like it's just like the Scorpio races are where it's at. And so we have two main characters. We have Sean Kendrick who is a guy whose dad was kind of like a champion racer and then he took his dad's place after his dad died and then he's also a champion racer and he's won like I think like four times and he doesn't really talk a lot he kind of keeps to himself and he like there's like this guy that owns a lot of things on the island and he works for him and like helps him run his stables and he's kind of an expert on these water horses and he like really knows how to train them and he has one of them that's kind of his horse that his dad used to ride is named Cor and um he has this really special relationship with Cor it's kind of weird because you're like kind of like nervous and scared of the horse because like he's gonna like eat you but at the same time like Sean has a really like touching relationship with him like somehow Maggie Seabarter made me care about horses in this book I don't really know um our other main character is named Puck and so she's kind of like a wild girl on the island her parents died the previous year and she's like struggling to make ends meet. Um, and so she decides that she's going to run in the races. So for me, the pacing was pretty slow, but I had a good time. Like, I feel like it was worth it. This isn't really a book to come to if like you're looking for like really in-depth world building. Like if you're expecting to know exactly where the island of Thisbe is, what time period it is, um, what are the Scorpio races? Why do they do them? Where do these water horses come from? Like, what's the mythology surrounding them? Like, this isn't the book for you. This is definitely, like, kind of just, like, vibing, like, feeling it out. Like, that doesn't make any sense. But, like, if you read it, it would make sense. Like, if you've read The Raven Cycle, you'll understand that Maggie's Tea Farter likes to just kind of, like, drop you into things without explaining it. And even though this is a lot more straightforward than The Raven Cycle, it still has that element of, like, I know you want to know, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, I personally don't mind that. I feel like me and Maggie Stiefvater, you know, our relationship is fine. I'm a, I don't really mind that she does that to me. But if you like really direct things, this probably isn't the book for you. Um, the writing is just 
so beautiful. I want to just like bathe in it. Like the island of Thisbe, ugh, she just describes it like so beautifully. Like ugh, I just wanted to go there and she kept describing these these like cakes that they're eating called November cakes and apparently like they only make them in the bakeries like on this island like when the Scorpio races are happening. Uh, my mouth is literally watering. Like that's how often she talked about these November cakes and they just sounded delicious. And like Puck's little brother like just loved them too and now I just want to eat them. Like my mouth is literally watering. Also, like I said, I don't know how Maggie Seafutter did it, but she somehow got me emotionally invested in horses. I also really like the relationship between Puck and Sean. Like they do have a romance, but it's super slow burn and sort of like very secondary to the story. And I really enjoyed that. Um, oh, I just, I really liked it. I liked it. I liked the lore. I liked the island. I liked the horses. I liked the love. Um, again, this is not a book if you're looking for like hard facts or like you know what's going on like this was really slow i feel like for me it was more of just like an experience like i feel like i got in a boat i went to the island of thisbe i kind of observed what was going on and then i left no explanations involved um i just witnessed a story and then i left and i had a good time i feel like definitely there could have been more explanations surrounding like the mythology and like what was going on but in general um it was a fantastic read and i recommend it if you like what i'm saying do what you will with what i just said but yeah that was pretty much it for my august and september wrap up um sorry that they're both kind of late um, but you know, better late than never. So yeah, let me know down below if you've read any of the books that I talked about in this video. I, there are quite a few of them. Um, yeah, I don't know why I just clapped, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day. Okay,